Hi everyone, Leo here and welcome back to another video. As we all love to paint and draw on Procreate, let me ask you this question. How many illustrations are you able to turn around on a monthly basis or even on a bi-monthly basis? If your answer is somewhere lower than you would like it to be, well, wouldn't it be nice to learn a couple tips and tricks to increase your productivity and speed up your workflow? And even if you say that the problem is not actually the time you spend while illustrating, it's actually the time you spend about thinking about these ideas and new ideas, well, once again, if you could actually learn these couple tricks, then you probably would have more time to think about these new ideas. That's exactly what I would like to help you out in this video. I wanna show you my top seven tips and tricks for increasing your productivity in Procreate. So what are we waiting for? Let's roll the intro and let's get to it. All right, starting with tip number one, multiple quick menus. One tool that has been expanded in Procreate 5X to accommodate more options to streamline your workflow is the quick menu. It allows now for the creation of multiple quick menus with each one allowing you to choose between six shortcuts. So I'm going to show you here one of the ways that I keep myself organized. First, I've created a sketching quick menu that contains two brushes that I use the most for sketching and erasing my brush strokes, as well as the ability to create new layers and merge layers, something that I do quite a lot as I work during the sketch phase. And lastly, the ability to quickly switch between painting and erasing. If we tap and hold on the center box, then we get a menu that allows me to switch between my inking and effects quick menus, which also have specific tools that I've selected as I've moved through the stages of a digital painting I'm working on. In order to activate the quick menu in the first place, let's head up to the actions menu, then tap on preferences, then tap on gesture controls. On the left side of the screen, find first the quick menu option, then select on the right side one of the ways to invoke this feature. Personally, I use the touch and hold with a short delay of 0.15 of a second. This number here is also intentional, meaning I don't have to wait too long to bring up this menu, while also at the same time not being too short of a delay that any touch on the canvas will bring up this feature. Once this setup is complete, you can tap and hold to activate the quick menu, then tap and hold once again on each one of the six options in order to choose what goes where. I love how we're able to choose a brush, a tool, or even an adjustment effect to replace these options. Tip number two, a selection of your go-to brushes in one single place. Another big part of staying organized is to merge and collect all of your favorite brushes into one place that can stay at the top of your brush library. This will help you travel around less in your brush UI, in your brush library, and eventually save time while you're illustrating. Let's start by tapping on the brush library icon and then sliding the list down so you can see the plus icon sitting at the very top of the brush library list. Tap on that icon and give your new set a name of your choice. This can be favorites, it can be most used, whatever title you prefer. Then find all the brushes you consider your go-to's, whether they are Procreate default brushes or brushes you have purchased from artists. Slide them to the left, make a copy of the brush, and then drag and drop to your created set. At the end, you should have a list that can always be a work in progress, meaning that you can constantly edit by adding and removing brushes as you go. Because you've made copies of those brushes, there's no worries on removing them, but just of course make sure that you have these copies in the first place before doing anything. Another thing that I like to do to these copies is to edit these brushes, going to the studio library and setting default sizes for them according to how I like to paint and what sort of canvas sizes I'm working while I'm illustrating. To give you an example, I've created this fine inking brush to have a minimum and maximum size locked at 1%, meaning that this allows me to have the same brush size no matter what size I actually have it on my brush slider. The result is always the same. This is super useful if you want to keep your brush strokes consistent while painting with a specific canvas size. Tip number three, the floating color picker. I believe that the floating color panel is one of the most overlooked features in Procreate 5X, mostly because the actual color panel 
gives you a lot of options in a much bigger format than the average size of the floating color panel UI. However, the idea here is to first set up your colors in the classic color panel, making sure then that your color palette is set as a default color palette, then tap and drag the color panel from the top of the UI onto your canvas. This allows you to use this feature of the floating color panel and still access all of the colors in your color palette much faster, as well as the four color modes that are offered, including color harmony, the classic color picker, and more. There is also the hidden color drag feature that is indeed available on this mode. You just have to tap and hold on each color and then drag it into the area that you want to fill. If you decide to tap and drag as fast as we're used to do color drag with the swatch menu at the top of the UI of Procreate, it just doesn't work. But the feature is still there and I still believe it's more convenient to have a floating color panel than to be dragging your arm all the way to the top right section of the Procreate UI every time you want to do a color drag. Tip number four, making backups into separate files as you go. The next one is more about working around the famous layer limitation in Procreate, but it's also a good way to keep backups and create landmark versions of your work. So for example, I do like to work in high resolution canvas. And by doing so, I can export my work in multiple formats and multiple sizes because I'm creating my original at a bigger format that allows me to go into Instagram, Facebook posts, or any other social media that I want to post my work, even use it for printing purposes. So when I create one of these canvases at 4,000 by 5,000 pixels, really at the model of my iPad, I only get about 22 layers to work with. So the problem here is that in 22 layers, I probably want to do, um, I want to use color fills. I want to separate my layers so that I can use clipping masks and masks and all that adds up rather quickly into the layer stack. So what I like to do really is to work on my sketching phase. And then once I'm happy with the sketching, I can leave those layers as separate layers where I can merge them all, but I still create and save that file. Then back into the gallery mode, I tap select, select the canvas that I want to, and then I tap on duplicate and I make a duplicate of that canvas. From the duplicated canvas, the new one, then I continue my work, making sure that I'm starting with the flat layer from whatever I'm working from. So back into the sketch example, I will flatten all the sketch layers and then I will start working on my fills. Next, when I'm done with my fills, I will then create a new copy and then work on my shading, making sure that I flatten as much as possible, but still giving me the freedom that I need in order to do the shading, meaning that I still probably need to have the fills into separate layers, but I try to at least merge as much as I can. At the end of the day, you'll be creating backups of your work and you'll have a sequence of files that you can always refer back to. Tip number five, putting your seatbelts on and saving your canvas presets. For saving your canvas presets, guys, I know it sounds quite laborious, but really saving your presets can help you a lot, especially if you keep doing recurring illustrations with the same canvas size. So first we have to tap on this little icon here, the little plus with a folder, and that takes us into the custom canvas creation here in Procreate. So here, as we know, we can set a dimension for width, height of the canvas, we know the DPI is here set as 300. I can put any number. I do like to start with at least 300 DPI. And then Procreate gives us the amount of layers based on these informations that we've put on. How many layers do we have based on the RAM model of that iPad, of the iPad we're working with? Now, in order to save that preset, all we have to do is just tap on the untitled uh, canvas right here. We can just say that this is going to be ghost paper, new poster, preset. And now if I tap create, procreate will take us to this canvas. And now if I go back into my gallery section and I tap on the plus, I'll probably see this at the very bottom of my canvas creation list. So all that I have to do is just tap and hold and bring it all the way to the top. So it's quite of a big list because procreate also saves sort of a history of all of your created or your custom created canvases. And now we do have this at the very top. I can slide to the left, I can edit, and I can delete as well. 
so I can clean up my list as I go. So all in all, I know this looks like an extra step, but really saving your Canvas presets here at the top of the list can save you a lot of time, especially if you do recurring canvases by creating stuff for Instagram, for example, if you do a lot of square illustrations, if you do a lot of 916 vertical posters or vertical posts on Instagram, it would be quite helpful to have these canvases saved here so you can spend more time creating and less time setting up your files. Tip number six, if you have a computer and a computer monitor, using that monitor as a second display in Procreate. So another feature that was added into Procreate 5X was the reference tool. It allows you to use that small window as a minimap. You can use it to zoom in as you're working on your canvas and really is another floating window that you can have as a helper as you're working on a bigger size canvas or a bigger illustration. However, the size of the iPad is already not big enough, like considering that the biggest model is 12.9 inches and you are already using some of that real estate by calling the reference tool. So really another overlooked feature that I find here in Procreate is the ability to project your canvas onto an external monitor. It's basically a very similar thing to the reference tool but you're actually projecting back into a monitor. In my case here, I have a widescreen monitor that still allows me to see my illustration really, really big as I'm free to keep working on Procreate. You can also use an HDMI cable with a USB-C adapter that is hooked up from your iPad straight to your monitor. And then you just need to change the input on your monitor to be able to recognize the iPad making sure that you're also using the correct color mode on the settings of your iPad. That is not the settings of Procreate, but the settings on your iPad, depending if you have an HDR compatible monitor or not. Tip number seven, working with keyboard shortcuts in Procreate. The final tip here for this video is really working with an external keyboard for using shortcuts in Procreate. This is a feature that has been talked about to a certain extent there are several ways to use external keyboards. You can use the actual wireless keyboard from Apple. You can use a Logitech keyboard and you can also use all sorts of gadgets in order to activate keyboard shortcuts in Procreate. Also on Procreate's official website and documentation, you can see all of these shortcuts available for you in order to set that up onto your production and then you can just rest your hand onto that controller keyboard whatever device you're using and use those shortcuts in a much faster way than just browsing around the ui of procreate on the screen of your ipad so that's it for this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed and if you did a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks reviews speed bank videos and that is all to make you a better digital illustrator every day now on the right side of the screen there's always more content for you guys to watch one is my latest upload and the other one is a video that youtube's recommending you to check it out thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one Ciao.